Hello, everyone. You well? Great. Um, so I'm Vic. I am an electrical engineer by background, and I'm a researcher right now at the MIT Media Lab in the Object-Based Media Group. And today I want to talk to you a bit about some research I'm working on here at the lab. Um, I call it LUI. It stands for a large user interface. But um, a little bit background behind it is um, I worked in the AR industry before over at Magic Leap and uh, a great experience. And one of the things I really wanted to do was look at new user, user interfaces that help kind of push the boundary, boundaries of AR. And so hopefully this talk will kind of give a little bit of background about that. First of all, a little bit of description about the interface is basically LUI is a scalable, multimodal gesture and voice interface for interactive media on large screens. Um, and the goal of it, it uses like non-discrete free-handed gestures and voiced and Android control UI elements and applications. Um, so I want to thank my, my advisors, Mike Bove from the object-based media group, as well as John Underkoffler, one of my advisors. Um, he's over at Oblong Industries, and then Zach Lieberman, who's also here at the Media Lab. Um, so one of the things I've been inspired by is sort of a minority report. Um, actually, John Underkoffler was the uh, person who kind of invented that interface. And uh, what you see here is sort of the way that people interact with content. On the top left, you see how Tom Cruise sort of swipes across the data. Um, on, the, on the bottom left, he sort of rotates his hand. It can change the interface. On the right side, you see um, actually on America's Got Talent um, how a person uses sort of gestures to move information on the screen and then select options that he sees in front of him. And so that inspiration tied with my experience at Magic Leap, I really thought, OK, well, why don't we create something that's scalable and something that's usable and deployable um, across all kinds of medium um, for you know, today's AR and future of AR. And so um, even today, you know, we still use controllers as a way to kind of interact with content, which is really useful. But then when you're wearing a pair of glasses or if you're uh, working with a large display like right here, sometimes you want to look at other uh, multimodal inputs to interact with that data. And so, you know, when I came to the Media Lab, you know, I saw so many large screens. I was like, man, like, I don't want to use like, a controller to kind of manipulate the data I see all the time. So why can't I kind of look at something differently? And so um, I did some research. And you see, like, in 1980, there was a, a project called Put That There, which also came out of the Media Lab. And so uh, this, this project uses, kind of user fing uses fingers as your markers, and then a point and click met methodology. But then UI was sort of primitive. Um, and it wasn't widely accessible. It was more of like a research kind of project. Um, and then John Underkoffler kind of invented G-Speak in 2007. And so this is a bit more advanced. Um, he used gloves that kind of you wore. Uh, and uh, you were able to interact with the content using those gloves. However, you know, this. Uh, interface required many, requires many sensors. And uh, it didn't really leverage many multimodal inputs like voice, but, and it wasn't very widely accessible. But yet, it kind of pushed the boundaries of um, interaction and how you can play with content beyond just using your keyboard or mouse. And so what I kind of envision um, is sort of this new multimodal type interface that sort of exists um, everywhere, um, on any screen, any large display, any AR device. And this interface sort of is responsive to the user's voice, the gestures, and sort of like kind of uh, interact with that in a very immersive way. And so um, my requirements were, you know, we want it to be easily accessible, so make it web-based. Um, it scales, um, extensible, so developer-friendly, and also incorporates sort of gestures and voices and input mechanism. And so my current instantiations were for large display purposes, heads-up displays, and augmented reality. And um, Currently, I'm playing around with a couple of different input modalities. So um, for the gestures, you know, you can use like air taps and swipes and hover and bloom. Um, and the way that I'm doing that right now is using the leap motion controller as an input mechanism. But ideally, if you're going for an AR device, you can leverage sort of the AR headset sort of um, our gesture capabilities. And so in this case, you know, the leap motion provides a lot of accurate data for um, your hand tracking. And uh, it's uh, pretty useful in terms of uh, um, uh, the free handedness. So, if you lock, looked at the previous research, um, you would have finger markers on your hands to kind of detect where your hands are. But in this case, your hands are sort of free, free floating, so you don't have to put anything on your hands to kind of uh, interact with the content. Um, and also, one of the things about gestures is there's two types there's like discrete <clears throat> and uh, non discrete gestures. And what discrete means is that you make an action and the UI responds in. Re re in reaction to that action. But then with continuous or non-discrete, basically your UI is sort of real time in terms of the gestural response. And so we're trying to create a more real time approach to how you do gestural tracking. And on the voice side, 
um, you know, there's a lot of applications now, right, with Amazon Alexa, Google Home, and currently we're looking at how we can leverage voice as a, as a secondary implement modality for this kind of interface. And whether it's be controlling your apps or whether it's searching content, and currently we're looking at using Google Home as an input device versus other devices just because of the amount of um, stuff that's already out there using the device. And um, Next slide, um, this is sort of applications that I see for um, this interface. So you, if you look at the third floor of the Media Lab, you, know, you see a huge um, screen, and you know, why can't we just use that as a way to interact with the content? And so we're looking at sort of leveraging sort of media applications, whether it's videos or photos or other kinds of interactive content that you can sort of see on the screen. But the second, the second uh, important thing is, I think, uh, coming from an engineering background is, I've always been passionate about CAD and modeling, and I think uh, modeling stuff on a large screen and be able to describe that content to other people is very important. And I think this kind of interface could be useful for that. And lastly, of course, um, for heads-up displays and AR, you know, where you don't really have the, the, uh, the ability to use a keyboard or a mouse, this interface becomes very useful for that. So this is a little demo of a little interface that we've been making here. So you see here, tracks my hand, I can swipe, unlocks the screen, you can access the different applications. This, the, the fingers are just kind of mapped to these dots on the screen, and you can sort of enter an application, swipe through some um, photos, um, and click on content. So this is sort of a preliminary design that we've been making, and this uh, next few months we'll be kind of making it more robust and adding in more applications to this concept. And one of the things I want to do is essentially deploy this in an AR platform, let's say like the Magic Leap or the HoloLens, leveraging like the web frameworks that we could do for that. And so you're viewing some videos, and um, so hopefully we can deploy this on any kind of uh, screen that you have today. Um, so I'm also going to be conducting some user studies later this uh, few months, and basically we're looking at the complexity of the device, the learnability, use usefulness, the voice, and the gestures. And so we want this to be something that's useful for everyone uh, of all age ranges, and um, how do you make gestures and voice useful is very important. Um, and also, um, how do you sort of complement of the gestures versus the voice, which one's more important in certain scenarios. So um, these are some things I'm looking at, and uh, I'm really excited to kind of work on this more and share more in the upcoming uh, near few months. And uh, if you're back again in March and April, hopefully we can get a demo of it. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm here at the lab, and I'm excited to um, share more about my work on AR. And, and if you guys have any questions, hit me up. <laughs>